All right, strap in, everybody. We're going deep on crypto regulation in the U.S. today, and things are getting spicy. Spicy is a good word for it. Yeah, especially with this lawsuit against the SEC. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Huge. We've got a Fox Business article, hot off the press, breaking it all down. It's a really good one. And some serious legal analysis from Stecto, a law firm that basically lives and breathes crypto law. They know their stuff, that's for sure. So let's get into it. The crypto world is kind of holding its breath right now, watching what's going to happen with the SEC, with President Trump about to take office. You can definitely feel the tension, like everyone's waiting to see which way the wind's going to blow. Exactly. So uh, to set the stage, we've got 18 states led by Kentucky's attorney general. Right. Basically throwing down the gauntlet and suing the SEC. It's pretty unprecedented. It is. So what's the big issue here? Well, at the heart of it, these states are saying the SEC under Gary Gensler has been way too aggressive in cracking down on crypto companies. Like overstepping their boundaries. That's their argument. They're saying Gensler's whole stance that most cryptocurrencies, except for like Bitcoin and Ether, should be treated as securities. Oh, you want like... a total overreach of his authority. Wow. That's a pretty bold accusation. It is. And they're backing it up by saying this whole broad interpretation of securities law has basically created this regulatory limbo for the industry. Makes sense. It's like nobody knows the rules of the game. Right, exactly. And they're saying it's actually stifling innovation and growth. Yeah, because companies can't operate exactly. or get investments if they don't know what the rules are. Totally. And to really drive the point home, the lawsuit actually claims the SEC is harming the very citizens it purports to protect. That's a strong statement. They're not holding back. Nope. And you know what's even crazier? What? The same day this lawsuit drops, Gensler's out there at a conference defending his actions. No way. Yeah, he's like, nope, we're doing the right thing. The courts have backed us up. We're protecting investors. So it's like a total standoff. Total standoff. You've got the states saying, hey, SEC, you're killing innovation with these broad strokes. Yeah. And then you've got Gensler like, hold on, I'm just doing my job protecting the little guy. And then you throw President Trump into the mix. Yeah. Talk about a wild card. He was all about the pro-crypto vibes during his campaign. Oh, yeah, big time. And even said he'd replace Gensler on day one. If he follows through on that, it could be a total game changer. Absolutely. So according to Steptoe, what are the possible scenarios here? Well, historically, SEC chairs have usually stepped down before a new president takes over. Regardless of party. Yeah, pretty much. So that's one possibility. Okay, so he could just resign. But what if he doesn't? What if Gensler decides he's not going anywhere? Then things get even more interesting because even if he doesn't resign, President Trump can still pick a new chair from the current SEC commissioners. Oh, wow. So Gensley might stay on as a commissioner? Right. But he wouldn't be in charge anymore? Exactly. That would definitely shake things up. Absolutely. Yeah. And think about it. If the commission ends up split on crypto, oh, it could slow down new regulations and enforcement actions at least for a while. So more limbo. Exactly. Okay. Companies would be like, okay, what are we supposed to do now? Yeah. Nobody would know what to expect. All right. So let's say Gensler sticks around as a commissioner, but we get a new acting chair who's more on board with Trump's vision. How could that change things for crypto? Well, could be huge. You could see some of Gensler's policies getting reversed. Yeah. And maybe they'd actually start giving companies some clear guidance on how to navigate this whole crypto thing. So instead of this regulatory limbo, there might actually be a clear path forward. Exactly. Companies would know what to expect. Investors would feel more confident. It could really open things up for innovation. So this lawsuit, plus the new administration, it really feels like a turning point for crypto in the U.S. I think you're right. It all comes down to this tension between letting innovation flourish and making sure investors are protected. It's a balancing act. Totally. And it's not just a U.S. thing either. The whole world is watching how we handle this. We could set a precedent here. Absolutely. And one more thing to keep in mind. It's not just the government involved in this. You've got groups like the DeFi Education Fund they're in on this lawsuit, too. They're pushing for clearer, more supportive regulations. So it's a whole ecosystem pushing for change. It sounds like we're at a real crossroads here. Whatever happens in the next few months could have ripple effects for years to come. No doubt about it. And the Steptoe analysis raised some really interesting points about how much power the president actually has over the SEC. It gets pretty deep into the legal weeds. Okay, I'm intrigued. Let's dive into those legal rabbit holes in part two. Welcome back. Before we jumped into that legal drama, we were talking about those arguments at the heart of this whole lawsuit. Hmm. It really boils down to like, 
what even is a security in the world of crypto? Right. Like, how do you apply these old laws to something as new as Bitcoin? That's exactly what the states are saying. They think Gensler is basically trying to shove a square peg into a round hole by saying most tokens are securities. Like, it goes against what Congress even intended when they wrote those laws. Congressional intent. Hmm. Are they using any specific legal cases to back that up? Oh, yeah. They're pointing to a bunch of cases where courts have taken a much narrower view of what counts as a security. They're basically arguing the SEC is going way beyond its authority and creating a regulatory environment that's just hostile to innovation. So it's not just a philosophical debate about the best way to regulate crypto. It's an actual legal battle over the definition of a security and who gets to call the shots. Exactly. And that leads right into the state's whole argument about federal overreach. They're saying, hey, a lot of states are already working on their own rules for crypto ones that actually fit the unique aspects of this industry. So they see the SEC as not just stifling innovation, but also like stepping on states' rights to regulate their own economies. That's the gist of it. And it's not just about businesses either. They're worried about investors, too. They argue that the SEC's crackdown is actually driving people towards these shady offshore platforms where there's even less protection. So it's like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation for the SEC. Exactly. You regulate too much and you stifle growth. You regulate too little and you risk investor safety. Okay, so the states seem to have a pretty strong argument. But couldn't you also say the SEC is just trying to do what they're supposed to do? protect investors from a market that's known for being super volatile and full of scams? Wait, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? How do yeah. you strike that balance between protecting investors and letting innovation thrive? There's no easy answer. Especially with something as complex and fast moving as crypto. What's interesting to me is this case could have implications way beyond the crypto world. It could set a precedent for how the U.S. handles other emerging technologies, too. Absolutely. Think AI, biotech, nanotech. These are all fields that are pushing the boundaries, and they're all going to need clear, adaptable rules to really take off. What happens with crypto regulation could be like a blueprint for how we govern these other technologies. So the stakes are pretty high. We're not just talking about the future of Bitcoin. We're talking about the future of innovation in America. And globally, too. We can't forget the global impact. If the U.S. messes this up and creates a hostile regulatory environment, it risks losing its leadership in these key sectors. Other countries that are more open to these new technologies could take over. OK, so bringing it back to right now, we've got this lawsuit going on and a president who seems pretty set on shaking things up at the SEC, considering all the possible outcomes we talked about earlier. What do you think is the most likely scenario? It's hard to say for sure, mm. but I think we can safely say the SEC is in for some big changes. Whether Gensler resigns or not, a new chair aligned with Trump's views would definitely have a major impact. And based on everything Trump said during his campaign, it seems pretty likely that this new chair would be a lot more sympathetic to the crypto industry's concerns about overregulation. That's a fair assumption. But it's important to remember that even within the pro-crypto crowd, there are different ideas about the best way to regulate this space. Some people want the government to basically stay out of it completely, while others think some level of regulation is crucial to protect investors and keep the market stable. So even if the SEC becomes more crypto friendly, it doesn't mean all regulations will just vanish. Nope. The big question is what that balance will look like. Will the new SEC focus on giving the industry clearer guidelines or will they try to dismantle the existing framework altogether? And how will that affect all the different players in the crypto world? Will it help the big established companies or will it create opportunities for new startups and more innovation? That's where it gets really interesting. A less strict regulatory environment could definitely attract more investment and encourage new products and services. But it could also make it easier for scammers and fraudsters to take advantage, potentially hurting investors and undermining the whole industry. So it's not as simple as saying less regulation is always good. It's about finding that sweet spot, a framework that supports innovation without sacrificing investor protection. You got it. And that's going to require a lot of careful thought and collaboration between policymakers, industry experts, and consumer advocates. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation. Okay. We've talked a lot about the good things that could happen with a more crypto-friendly SEC, but let's flip the coin for a second. Are there any potential downsides or risks we should be thinking about? That's a great point. Less regulation might sound appealing on the surface, but there are definitely some potential pitfalls to consider. One concern is that a sudden rush of new money and in companies into crypto could create a bubble, kind of like what happened with the dot-com boom back in the day. So we could see 
Tons of speculative investments, followed by a crash that leaves a lot of people holding the bag. It's definitely a possibility. Another worry is that without clear rules, it becomes easier for bad actors to exploit the system. We can see more scams, hacks, and other types of fraud, which would ultimately hurt trust in the entire crypto ecosystem. That would be a huge blow to crypto's credibility. For sure. And then there's the whole question of systemic risk. As crypto becomes more integrated into the regular financial system, a major disruption in the crypto market could have a domino effect across the entire economy. So it's not just about protecting individual investors. It's about protecting the stability of the whole financial system. Exactly. And finding that right balance mm -hmm. between fostering innovation and managing those risks is going to be a huge challenge for regulators in the coming years. It feels like we're at a pivotal moment. The decisions made in the next few months could have a lasting impact on the future of crypto, not just in the U.S., but globally. And this is where the step-toe analysis raises a really interesting question. What if Trump replacing Gensler on day one actually backfires and creates even more uncertainty in the market? You're talking about that legal gray area we discussed right, yeah. earlier, right? Whether the president can actually remove an SEC commissioner without a specific reason? Exactly. If Trump tries to fire Gensler outright, it could trigger a massive legal battle that drags on forever, adding to the uncertainty and making it even harder for companies to plan for the future. So even if Trump's trying to create a more supportive environment for crypto, his actions could unintentionally lead to more chaos and instability. It's definitely within the realm of possibility. And that's what makes this whole situation so fascinating. There are so many factors at play and the outcome is still up in the air. Plus, we can't forget about Congress. They could step in and try to clarify the rules for crypto or they could stay out of it and let the courts and the SEC figure it out. It's like we're watching a game of chess with each player making strategic moves that could have massive consequences. And the final outcome will determine the future of crypto in the US and maybe even the world. Before we get too carried away with the chess metaphors, let's do a quick recap of the key takeaways so far. First, we've got this huge lawsuit that's basically challenging the SEC's power to regulate crypto and questioning the very definition of a security. And second, we have a new president who's promised to shake things up at the SEC and make it more innovation friendly for the crypto industry. And third, we've got this whole tangled web of legal and political uncertainties that makes it almost impossible to predict what's going to happen with crypto regulation in the U.S. It's a fascinating and dynamic situation for sure. One that we'll be keeping a close eye on in the months to come. Definitely. And in part three, we'll delve even deeper into the legal intricacies of this case and explore some of the different scenarios that could play out as the story unfolds. All right, let's crack open this legal mystery surrounding President Trump and his power over the SEC. This step-toe analysis really digs into some fascinating stuff. It really does. Yeah. You know, it all comes down to this idea of for-cause protection for... SEC commissioners. Right. That basically means they can't just be fired without a good reason, like misconduct or something. You'd think so, right. But that's actually being challenged now. Oh, really? Yeah. Steptoe points to this legal scholar, Andrew Vollmer. He's arguing that this forecast protection doesn't actually have a solid legal foundation. So maybe the president has more power to remove a commissioner than we thought. That's what Vollmer's saying. Wow. If that idea gains traction, it could be a huge deal. Oh, absolutely. Think about it. If President Trump tries to directly fire Gensler, it could set off a legal battle that ends up in the Supreme Court. That would be a landmark case for sure. Not just wow. for crypto, but for defining how much power the president really has. You got it. And all this legal uncertainty just adds to the confusions. Like companies are trying to navigate a maze blindfolded. They need clear guidance from regulators, but that's nowhere in sight. Yeah, it's tough for businesses to operate when they don't know what the rules are. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, at least this lawsuit is forcing a really important conversation about how to build a regulatory system that actually works. For both sides, right. The crypto industry, A&D, the investors. Exactly. And it goes beyond just picking a side, pro-crypto or anti-crypto. It's about creating rules that let innovation happen, but also have the right guardrails in place to protect people. We talked about the potential upside of a more crypto-friendly SEC, but what about the flip side? What are the risks of going too light on regulation? Good question. I mean, less regulation might sound great at first, but there are some potential downsides we need to consider. One big one is the risk of a bubble. Like, if the regulations are too lax, people might go crazy investing in crypto and then dot boom. You got it. 
classic yeah. boom and bust cycle. We've seen it happen before with other new technologies. Right. History often repeats itself. And without the right oversight, it's easier for bad actors to slip through the cracks. We could see an increase in scams, hacks, you name it. That would really erode people's trust in crypto. Yeah, that would be a huge step backward for the whole industry. And then there's this systemic risk to think about. As crypto becomes more woven into the fabric of traditional finance, any major problems in the crypto market could ripple out and affect the entire economy. So it's bigger than just protecting individual investors. It's about protecting the stability of the whole financial system. Exactly. And finding that sweet spot, balancing innovation with risk management. That's the challenge for regulators going forward. It's a tough one for sure. It feels like we're at a turning point. Whatever yeah. happens with this lawsuit and with Trump's potential moves at the SEC, it's going to have a lasting impact. No doubt about it. Which brings us back to that question from the Steptoe analysis. Could Trump appointing a new SEC chair actually make things more uncertain? Right, because of that potential legal battle over whether he can even remove a commissioner. Exactly. If that happens, it could drag on for years, leaving everyone in limbo. And companies need clarity to make plans and move forward. So even if Trump's trying to help crypto, he could end up making things worse. It's like sometimes trying to fix something too quickly can actually break it. It's a delicate balance, that's for sure. <laughs> and let's not forget about Congress and all of this. They could jump in and try to create some clear rules for crypto, or they could just sit back and let the courts and the SEC sort it out. It's like a chess match, everyone making moves that could have huge consequences. And the final outcome will determine the future of crypto, not just here, but potentially around the world. It's a pretty exciting and nerve-wracking time to be following this industry. It definitely keeps us on our toes. If there's one thing we've learned from this deep dive, it's that staying informed is more important than ever. This stuff is complex and it's changing all the time. Absolutely. Knowledge is power, especially in the fast-paced world of crypto. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, that's a wrap for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us and we'll be back soon with another insightful look at a topic that matters to you. Stay tuned.